You are here because you're at the forefront of technology. Welcome to the Things Conference 2021. Uh, what a different conference this uh, this is, Johan. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. So we're gonna. Uh, this is the opening keynote. Uh, we're gonna have all kinds of cool uh, product announcements again, services, etc. And um, uh, you sit back, relax, put it, uh, put it on full screen, like the button somewhere in the corner. Put it, put on your headset, and uh, just let us guide you through all the latest and uh, and is the greatest. Right. Uh, and enjoy. Anything you want to share with uh, with the audience, uh, Jon? No. No. <laughs> no. Nothing specific. <laughs> Not for okay. No, just, I have a lot. Of, I have a lot to share. You have a lot, a lot to, to share. share. Okay, that's yeah. good. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna kick this off. Um, uh, welcome, and um, we have a massive lineup of speakers. Um, uh, 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 we have more than. Uh, then 60 speakers, uh, we have workshops. Um, yeah, all the leaders in the industry are there. Um, yeah, wide range, technical, uh, business, etc. cetera. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's super cool. Um, yeah, we have uh, partners, all our long-term partners. These are our gold sponsors uh, and, um, uh, and many, many companies in the ecosystem join us. And also a lot of new ones. It seems that, that the LoRaWAN ecosystem has grown massively. It's growing and I'll, I'll show you later. Uh, you, you, have yeah. more, you have more data, that's, that's, that's really nice. Thanks, uh, thanks Johan. Um, yeah, and Johan, can you tell me about, about like, what can people do with devices? All the devices. So if you have been to the Things Conference editions in the past years, you know the blue famous LoRaWAN of, fi of fame. Um, we took that virtual, uh, so we have now all these devices, again, where you can even interact with in a virtual way. So it's even better than the physical edition of the Things Conference. And we have a great lineup of speakers like Vinke said, and the content really goes from new features uh, uh, provided by the Silicon to advanced data analytics in the cloud and everything in between, and uh, products and service announcements from our partners and sponsors, and uh, obviously also uh, from us. For sure, for sure. And uh, if you're done uh, learning, uh, then uh, we have 25 uh, social islands for informal uh, and, and business serendipity and, and networking. And it looks a bit like this. Yeah, you just log in. Uh, you will find the links on the platform. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we, we, we do this as a company actually quite regularly. So at the end of the day, just get a cold beer from the fridge and join one of the islands yeah. and uh, have a chat with the rest of the participants. And uh, we'll, we'll be there uh, as well, so that's, uh, that's good. So, um, um, uh, the Things Network and the Things Industries uh, uh, um, can't stop, won't stop. Um, uh, 20, uh, 2020 has been a crazy year, but also it's been a crazy year for IoT. Uh, uh, um, yeah, we see massive growth, right? So, uh, of course, we started off with our physical conference. Crazy to think that uh, one year ago, we were actually with 1,500 people in Amsterdam from 61 countries. Um, yeah, let's hope we have that next year. Probably uh, we, we will have that. Um, we uh, celebrated our fifth anniversary. Uh, that, was, that was pretty nice. Time flies. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> That, uh, that goes fast. And again, we beat in a, not a world record. What was this again? Uh, this was during the virtual conference, uh, from, uh, again, from a weather balloon from our uh, uh, friends in the middle of the Netherlands, Things Network community. And uh, this weather balloon was at, I think, around 36 kilometers and reached the gateway in Czech Republic. Um, 832 kilometers, which is actually almost the physical limit of uh, LoRa. So um, yeah, let's see if uh, somebody can beat this. Yeah, yeah, we still, uh, yeah. 2021 uh, is up for a challenge. So um, uh, we've seen um, 
widely in the lower one ecosystem, a massive growth. Th these are uh, our gateways uh, every year we share. Uh, what do we see here, Johan? Uh, these are gateways, uh, the compound set of gateways connected to the Things Network uh, community network, uh, as well as um, the Things Industries private networks. Um, and um, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a it's nice, really good growth uh, yeah. that we see uh, uh, time over time. And it also uh, is challenging and really fun for us to um, to see the growth and you know to see the. Uh, the engineering that we need to do in our team to um, uh, to make sure that we can route all the packets. Yeah, yeah and we've seen also uh, a continuous growth in uh, uh, interest from developers, yeah. right? And if you look at uh, that, we expect in the in the world there's around 25 million developers that can deliver production code. Um, you see th that that there's just this uh, magic around IoT, and uh, this is this is just ever interesting for, for developers. And, and these two actually form the ingredients to, to what's next, right? So, so the amount of devices now is even going at a faster pace and you see really the pickup and it makes a lot of sense. Um, we all know that uh, IoT is hard. We all know that building an application is hard, but once you have a success and you can scale that, the, the um, amount of devices goes uh, through the through the roof, and we're nearing already at this point around uh, uh, 800,000 uh, devices that uh, that we have on the network, and um, and all these dev devices they generate data, yeah. right? And they route a lot of traffic, and that is actually where we see the steepest growth. Um, that is the number of messages that uh, are being sent by all these devices um, per second. So we are now reaching 600. Uh, messages per second, it's, it's really hard to imagine how, how many that is. Um, but those are installed devices, right? So those are, those are devices, so you, you saw the number of developers and a number of gateways and the number of registered devices, but that is, they can also be somewhere in the supply chain. But this is really the number of messages that are being sent by devices that are out there in the field. Yeah. And see also how many devices and how much this volume increased in 2020, a year where, which was for a lot of people and companies, pretty challenging. Yeah. And, and a challenge uh, uh, supply chains, etc. So, so this, this is just very interesting. I just, just said, this is end-to-end -end application uh, data streaming. These are no forecasts, this is just reflection. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah indeed. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to, to mention here as well. So, um, and to make that all work, and to make sure that we can keep routing the traffic, um, uh, this is we, we, we need our stack and we need the thing stack and I'll tell a little bit more about that later. Um, and this shows you the amount of lines um, that we uh, that we wrote and that are open source. Um, so you, it starts from 2016 when we had a really simple and small open source stack. And the last few years, and you see that in 2019 we uh, fully focused on V3, uh, the thing stack V3. Uh, and uh, we are now, we passed uh, 300,000 lines of code, so that's no blank lines, no comments, no dependencies, no generated code. It's just purely handwritten code um, by our team, uh, which is available uh, for the open source community. Uh, and we use that also to, um, as an engine to route all the traffic and to connect all the gateways. Wow, that's super awesome. So, um, uh, and so, so all this, these metrics, these are, these are technical, uh, metrics, uh, so to say, they all come from real life use cases, and um, you can literally say uh, LoRa is everywhere. Uh, if you look at the diversity of our ecosystem and the diversity of our user and customer base, it's like everywhere around the world in any industry. So just let me quickly go through a few of them. So for instance, uh, we see LoRa ships for condition monitoring. Um, uh, LoRa is used uh, by a large supermarket chains for asset tracking. Um, uh, it's being used by a railway organization, in this case, to synchronize the clocks. Um, these are partners that do predictive maintenance, so they measure the sound of uh, these engines, and then they, they are able to uh, detect uh, uh, anomalies. Uh, we uh, have industrial customers here. Uh, it's one of our custom, uh, customers, Axions. They use it for uh, tracking uh, workers across industrial sites. Um, they even used uh, all kinds of sensors to, to make sure that uh, art is preserved uh, at the right conditions. Right? Um, uh, 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 our uh, partner InView is using uh, uh, LoRa to make uh, retail security systems to make sure that you have display products that you can use 
and see as a customer, but yet again uh, introduce uh, security. So not somebody, not just somebody just walks out the door with it. Elderly care, where you we have uh, all kinds of use cases around uh, detection of if somebody has fallen or if somebody already took their uh, medicine um, in facility management. In this case, this year we've seen that WeWork is introducing um, CO2 sensors to measure if the ventilation is properly done uh, uh, in the light of, of course, uh, the, the COVID crisis. Um, uh, our partner, Spacewell, they are automating entire buildings, creating a digital twin of the building, making sure you can do all kinds of analytics around it. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, customers that are tracking cows, uh, in this case, an application that uh, determines bull performance. Um, uh, this is a customer that tracks uh, a cows through colors, and they have analysis around herding and uh, all kinds of metrics. Uh, in this industry, um, we have uh, this is a corporation from Scotland uh, doing a lot of different agricultural use cases like moisture, like irrigation, uh, etc. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a company that uh, measures CO2 in schools. Uh, a lot of uh, countries have regulation around the CO2 le levels in the cl classroom. They make sure that these schools are uh, being kept compliant. Um, Cold chain, in this sense, it's temperature uh, measurement of fridges in a, a medical environment. Uh, and, of course... The mousetrap. The mousetrap. <laughs> there, it's, yeah. it's always there. The better mousetrap. And this is not going to go away, right? The business case is so solid uh, 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 where in a facility management uh, case, you, 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 you are notified on when a, a rodent is caught. So, literally... Everywhere around the world, in every industry, you can find Laura. Not only our technical metrics say it, but also all the uh, 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 narratives and all the stories we have from our customers. So what drives all these different use cases? Well, that's the thing stack. That's our product, our um, LoRaWAN network server, uh, and all the integrations and uh, peering technologies behind it. So the architecture of the main components uh, is what you see here. So you see gateways on the left, they are connected to a gateway server. We have a LoRaWAN network server, an application server, all kinds of integrations. Uh, we also have the join server, an identity server with a registry of um, users and applications and everything. So this is a complete stack to build a uh, LoRaWAN network. And um, if you look at the features, uh, I won't mention all of them, but it's feature complete. You can uh, connect any LoRaWAN device uh, in any um, device class in any region. Uh, we have a really intuitive web interface where you can manage the network, where you can add devices, where you can configure integrations, uh, where you can also see if everything is going well. Uh, we have APIs, so as a developer, as a systems integrator, uh, you can integrate the thing stack in your solution um, so that you can also combine it with other IoT technologies. Uh, or you can uh, connect it directly in an, in an IoT platform, so, such as AWS IoT uh, or Azure IoT. Um, we also have uh, in packet broker interface that is really part of every uh, the thing stack deployment. Uh, and I'll show you in a bit um, uh, what that is. The console, uh, that's what we spend a lot of time on. That's a web interface to uh, manage the, um, uh, the LoRaWAN network. Um, it's, it looks a lot if you're used to uh, V2 of our stack. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a new generation, uh, really built from scratch, uh, where you can log in, manage your applications and gateways, uh, see the live traffic flowing. So if your gateway receives a message, you immediately see that. Uh, in the console, you can... Uh, get all the metadata and see how your network performs, uh, configure integrations, you can do everything in the console. So connecting all these things and connecting all these networks um, is, is all enabled by the packet broker. And um, you should really see the thing stack as a, as a core component, uh, as a product, and you can um, install or use the thing stack in different instances or different deployment models, as we call them. So on the top left, you see um, the, the open source deployment. You can go to our GitHub, um, follow our getting started instructions, and uh, install the thing stack on your server. Uh, it's fully uh, functional. There are no limitations. 
um, and you can connect gateways and uh, build LoRaWAN applications. And you can connect even your open source uh, installation to the packet broker. Then you see the Things Network, that's our community network. Uh, so that's hosted and there's all the gateways and all the uh, collaboration is going on there um, uh, uh, is in, in, a global, uh, in a global way. In the bottom, you see the Things Stack Enterprise. Uh, that's our enterprise uh, distribution uh, with all enterprise features, multi-tenancy, clustering, uh, single sign-on with uh, enterprise systems, uh, all sorts of advanced analytics, uh, things like that. Really everything you need to build a large-scale uh, LoRaWAN network. Uh, and you can deploy that on your own infrastructure, but we also have uh, templates available to uh, deploy that on a public cloud. And finally, uh, that's our flagship service, the ThingStack Cloud. It's our hosted offering uh, where we provide a service level agreement uh, and it's fully managed and uh, you have your own environment and these are all connected to Packet Broker. And what that means is that you can, uh, you can exchange traffic with other networks. So first you, you choose your deployment model, you choose whether you want to use the community network, you choose if you want to use your own open source installation or our cloud managed solution or enterprise solution. Um, but whatever you choose, you can collaborate and exchange traffic with other networks via the packet broker. What's also new and what is an inherent component of the thing stack is our device repository. Because we figured that it's always quite challenging to onboard new LoRaWAN devices because there are so many settings, so many LoRaWAN versions out there, uh, so many things you need to, uh, need to know about. And, um, so what we came up with is to fill this gap and to um, make it really easy for device makers to submit the information about their end devices in a open source repository, the device repository on GitHub. And our, the ThingStack product can load all this information and this makes it really easy to onboard new devices. It also integrates really well with the new QR code. Uh, that's a new LoRa Alliance uh, specification. And this contains some identifiers about a LoRaWAN device. Uh, for example, the join UI, the dev UI, uh, some information on uh, the uh, proof of ownership, but it doesn't contain any security keys. So it's just an identification, but it does contain a pointer to the profile um, that is in the uh, device repository. So if you see new LoRaWAN devices with this QR code, if you scan this QR code and uh, you onboard this to the thing stack. The thing stack knows exactly which device it is and which parameters uh, it should use uh, when onboarding the device. So just as an example, these are the LoRaWAN version, the regional parameters version, uh, things like the uh, ERP, if it's OTAA or ABP and what are the channels, the delays and everything, uh, class B and class C parameters, all the stuff uh, that you need to know to onboard a device. Besides the profile, it also contains the payload codex, so no more uh, playing around with JavaScript and bit shifting yourself. Um, uh, these codecs are now provided by the device makers themselves. They maintain it and you can use it uh, in an open source uh, way. The device repository also plays a central role, uh, not only in onboarding the device, but also as a catalog. Um, and we will also connect our marketplace uh, on our websites to the device repository, as well as the wall of fame. So it's a central place uh, where uh, device makers can submit information about their devices. So it's not only the profiles and the codex, but it's also where you can buy them, what the operating conditions are, uh, uh, the compliancy, um, uh, and, and things like that. So we already have uh, worked uh, closely with the device maker community and we are really happy that they already submitted 363 profiles. Uh, so you can already uh, make use of those and we are actively working with the device maker community uh, to get all the LoRaWAN devices out there. Uh, and if you are a device maker or if you're building LoRaWAN devices, feel free to go to GitHub, uh, the Things Network account, LoRaWAN devices repository and get started. Uh, so, Johan, why is this so important for uh, uh, scalability and, 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 and also the, 
the cost at scale? Like, yeah. like how does this? So we see that onboarding uh, gateways and onboarding devices is really a time consuming process. And if you're only onboarding 10 devices and it takes 10 minutes per device, that's fine. But if you want to onboard 10,000 devices, uh, you really want to uh, you really want a quick process, and you also don't want to have any mistakes there. Uh, so the device repository really decouples uh, what the device makers know, the expertise that they have. Uh, they know exactly what the binary payload is, and the solution provider who just buys the devices and they don't want to know or they don't want they don't need to enter the the codex and make mistakes there. So you put the responsibility in the right place. Yeah. Okay, that's that's really a nice uh, to see. So so then. Um, um, uh, very un interesting new features uh, uh, around the thing stack, the packet broker, how it all comes together. Um, but just one step back and, and just revisit, like, what's the power of LoRaWAN again? Uh, and, um, and, and why like, does it find so much interest in the market? Um, uh, first of all, it's ultra low power. So, um, and what we've seen over the years, that actually that's the main USB. So, um, uh, and uh, ultra low power means b uh, sensors that run on a battery for very long, and it also means that you don't have to replace them uh, very often, and that means lower cost in your sensor ma maintenance. Um, the other one is long range. I mean, we said, uh, yeah, we, we've seen 800 kilometers. Um, uh, you could criticize us and say, yeah, you're, you're setting wrong expectations. Of course, this is an experiment, but uh, long range is still, uh, still very much a feature and it, it, it goes way further than, of course, Wi-Fi or Zigbee or Bluetooth. Uh, deep indoor penetration. Um, why do you see that um, in, in buildings uh, you, uh, you have so much usage of this uh, technology because of this feature? Um, it is in the free spectrum. There's no permission required to use LoRaWAN. That is a very strong feature. Um, uh, geolocation, uh, we've integrated uh, the LR1110. It's a new product that was announced at our previous conference, um, but also uh, by Semtech. And uh, also their cloud services allow you to position the device. Um, the combination of that, you can either be build big carrier operator-like networks, but you can also build a lot of private networks and combine them uh, as you've shown on uh, all these different uh, uh, deployment options. The end-to-end -end security is embedded in the protocol, so it's not on top of it, which just makes it by design very strong. Um, um, uh, you're actually the inventor of the, the first firmware over the air update uh, solution over LoRaWAN, and that's gaining maturity right now, which is very, very strong. Uh, um, what, you are, what we're also excited about is the certification program by the LoRa Alliance that uh, gives a stamp on uh, if a device is actually working properly, very strong, well, important for the network effects in the big ecosystem that it has. Uh, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of devices available um, uh, uh, for any use case uh, out there. And this is just the overview. Huh? So uh, I have a talk, also this conference, uh, LoRaWAN Fundamentals. And it's more than an hour of content diving deep into LoRaWAN, and it's an entry-level presentation. So if you're new to LoRaWAN, or if you want to know, you know, the more about cohesion, then also watch that talk. Yeah, yeah I think that is that is it's it's a very condensed piece uh, uh, of our and uh, uh, I think I can yeah. advise everybody to watch it. Yeah. So what happened in in LoRaWAN uh, in the LoRaWAN technical on the technical side last year? So there is a new LoRaWAN version, uh, 1.0.4. Uh, it contains a lot of improvements uh, related to Class B, for example, and many other things, uh, security improvements, and a lot of clarifications. Uh, so that's really good. And Next to that, there is the LoRaWAN certification test tool, and that allows you as a device maker to uh, run all sorts of tests with your end devices before you submit it to a test house for certification. And this is free for all LoRa Alliance members, uh, and that reduces the cost dramatically for certifying uh, your LoRaWAN devices. The QR code specification, um, I already mentioned it, I already showed it, but that's really instrumental for onboarding uh, new LoRaWAN devices. And uh, finally, there is a new regional parameter specification that also adds a lot of regions to LoRaWAN. So if you are somewhere in the world uh, where you want to deploy a network, it's very likely uh, that that is now possible uh, in a certifiable way even. So that's great. So we already mentioned the growth of the LoRaWAN uh, volume, uh, number of messages. 
And uh, we did some data and, uh, and, and analytics, and uh, so like I said, 600 messages per second. And this is this is like we have many gateways across the world. Yeah. All the messages that come in there, they go through the packet broker. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and and this is the data set. Yeah, so we took a sample, uh, because it's a lot of data, and uh, we took a sample of a few days, and uh, um, traffic for the Things Network is roughly 64%, so that's for the community network. Um, and this is only by gateways connected to the Things Network uh, or TTI networks, right? So um, uh, it's, it's obviously skewed, um, but that means that we also see about a third of the traffic is not just for uh, the Things Network community. So let's dive into that. So those are messages received for uh, commercial networks by the Things Network gateways. And that gives you a little bit of, of an idea how big LoRaWAN is. Uh, and this is also growing, right? So it's those we see... Uh, uh, the, the entire pie is, is, yeah. is immensely growing. Yeah, yeah and that, that is really good. I think that's really big accomplishment for, uh, for the ecosystem. Uh, and then there are many, many other uh, smaller networks here in the other category uh, that are deployed globally, and obviously a lot of LoRaWAN ac activity outside our coverage area, and that's also great. Um, so, just based on data, uh, we saw um, an increase in volume of 100% in the last six months. Uh, so it's growing really fast now, uh, and that's, that's really good. We hope to see that growth um, sustaining in the coming, uh, coming year. And these devices are actually designed, manufactured, distributed, installed somewhere. They, are, they have been tested, they are, they are out there, and they are sending this traffic. So that's already a huge pipeline. It's already, when, when the owners of these devices, when they started thinking about their use cases, maybe that's already two years ago. So imagine what is in the pipeline, uh, what, is, what is now being manufactured, what is now being onboarded and tested. Um, so that's that's really interesting to watch. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, it it just truly shows the maturity of the of the ecosystem. B like we always said, building an end-to-end -end solution is actually very hard because you need so much uh, uh, cap so many capabilities. Yeah, uh, and, and we and made so many mistakes. And 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 yeah. and and below that, like if you look at the numbers, there's this immense amount uh, of work, uh, uh, people relentlessly going through because they have this core belief that this technology yeah. is going to uh, provide it. And, and it seems that we're at this point that, that, that we're reaching these maturity levels in the LoRaWAN ecosystem. It's also the right time to start. And that's yeah. also why uh, we put a lot of time again at recording a LoRaWAN Fundamentals video. If you're new to LoRaWAN, uh, because we, there are obviously a lot of people new to LoRaWAN, if you see this growth, um, this is also really the, the right time to start. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, so, um, so we've talked about messages, we talked about technology, developers, many use cases. And um, uh, if you look at uh, 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 the developers in the world, and, and what we just said, like, w like when is it time to start to get into uh, LoRaWAN? That's actually now. But in the world uh, of uh, roughly 7.7 .7 billion people, there's only 25 million people that can deliver production level code. So the amount of developers actually very small. Um, and um, uh, uh, what we've seen uh, across the industry is that after the, uh, the last five years, we've been able to educate a lot of them. Uh, but we want to take that one step further uh, by introducing uh, the Things certification. So these are it's going to start off with four basic certifications. They, uh, they, uh, you can get them at this, uh, this conference. Um, we have all the content to get you prepared for the quiz that uh, what makes you earn these badges. Uh, and uh, these are uh, fundamentals, advanced uh, uh, security and, and network management. Uh, and there will be more to come. So we'll have partners that introduce their uh, the Things certification version. Uh, and we also have um, um, uh, additional acknowledgements and badges that, uh, that can be earned. And uh, we're, we're, we're super excited about that. Yeah. So, so now you can get your Device is certified, and yourself. And yourself as well. This is, this is, this is. And uh, if you like, you can also uh, put it as a tattoo, but that's yeah. just, that's optional. Uh, you have one, I guess. But yeah, I have one here. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, so the certifications costs are 99 euros per certification. They're free for everybody at the conference, uh, and they're uh, free until the uh, first of uh, of March. Uh, and um, uh, what's next is that we've seen so much demand for education or 
um, getting people up to speed, making sure you don't make the beginner mistakes, that we've decided to launch something new. And that's the Things Industries Developer Success Program. Um, this is a complete package, a subscription with a yearly fee that makes sure that um, you do not make the beginner's mistakes, right? That you save so much time by going into the right direction. And this program consists of a different uh, uh, a set of services. Uh, it will cost 199 euros per year. You will get a development enterprise network server with it. Uh, you can get unlimited certification. So already, if you want to go for the full stack of certification, this is already uh, cheaper for a year. You have access to all uh, uh, online conferences. You will get discounts for physical conferences. Um, four times a year, we have update sessions where we have all our experts from our teams, from our partners, gathered on four days a year where we'll update you in a year. And also, if you're new, it's all complete tutoring session to get you uh, uh, through the tests and educators uh, you. Um, uh, uh, also part of this is that you get one enterprise support ticket for free per year uh, and uh, you'll create, uh, you'll use a system which will allow you to prototype but also it's easy to migrate to uh, uh, enterprise production system from there. And we're super excited about this uh, product and if you want to know more uh, uh, go to the booth and uh, you will find all the uh, of the things industries and you will find all the information there. So, um, the foundation of all this innovation is Laura and uh, Laura is developed by, uh, by Semtech. Um, and uh, next up we have uh, uh, Alistair Fulton, he's uh, General Manager Wireless IoT and Laura at Semtech. Uh, under his leadership you have seen this massive growth and um, yeah, we'd love to hear all about, uh, uh, all about what he has to say. Hi there and welcome to the Things Conference. I'm Alistair Fulton and I'm General Manager of Semtech's Wireless Business, a proud sponsor of the Things Conference 2021. Every year, the range of different applications that LoRaWAN is used to support grows and becomes even more enormous. And while 2020 has in so many ways been a very challenging year, that innovation has continued, even accelerated, in response to the growing need for IoT solutions worldwide. While it's disappointing for us all not to be there together in Amsterdam, like you all, I'm really looking forward to learning about all of the amazing innovations that the TTN community has built, that we'll hear about and see in the coming days. LoRaWAN is unique, a unique combination of the low power and long range of LoRa that's essential for the Internet of Things, combined with the innovation of an open source developer ecosystem. Unlike other IoT solutions, LoRaWAN gives developers the freedom and flexibility to answer the problems your customers face today. In record time, LoRaWAN has progressed from early stage innovation to mass adoption, driven by an ever-growing ecosystem, leaving other legacy technologies in the dust. And now, more than ever before, with 150 public network operators across 100 countries, and with more than 1.2 million deployed gateways across the public and many thousands and tens of thousands of private networks out there, spanning land, sea and now even space, enough capacity to support more than 5 billion endpoints, now more than ever before the choice is yours. With a choice of silicon, a broad range of powerful developer tools and services, a rapidly growing universe of LoRaWAN hardware and an ecosystem driven standard that supports innovation, ensures interoperability and reduces development friction. Now more than ever, LoRaWAN is delivering IoT solutions that are changing the world, enabling a better life for everyone. So whether you're in sunny California in North America like me, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australasia or even South America, in the words of Vinke and Johan, let's build this thing together. Welcome to the show. And don't forget to stop by the Semtech booth on Wednesday or Thursday to learn more about what's coming next. So very interesting to hear, and um, and, and thanks for being uh, being uh, uh, such a great sponsor. Um, so uh, next up uh, is uh, the Laura Lines. Um, they are governing the Laura Wen standard, and uh, we're very honored to have Donna Moore here. Um, she is the best thing that ever happened to Laura One. Uh, when uh, she's leading the Laura Line, uh, Laura Lyons as a chairwoman, uh, and it's been like tremendous and, and inspiring to see her keeping focus uh, uh, within the uh, within the alliance. Uh, and and here's Donna. 
Hello, I'm Donna Moore, CEO and Chairwoman of the Laura Alliance, and I'm thrilled to be kicking off 2021 presenting at the TTN conference. You know, 2021 is all about scale. And if you join me later in my presentation, I will tell you why Laura Wan is the only LP WAN ready to scale in big volume in 2021. I'm also joined by a couple colleagues from the Laura Alliance. Albert Yagen, our technical chair and vice chair of the board, has two presentations. You'll not want to miss them if you really want to understand what's happening and the latest updates on our technical specifications. We also have Dave Jindal, who will be presenting, who sits on the board and is the chair of the regional parameters. Dave will share with you about how to deploy in various regions around the world. And last, we have Derek Hunt from the Laura Alliance, who is a director of certification. Derek Hunt will talk about why certification is so important, particularly when we're looking at scale. And what happens if you don't certify? And what does that mean for you and the products in the market? So I look forward to you joining the presentations and really learning about Laura Wan because this is the year of scale. And again, I'll share with you why. Have a great conference and thanks. Uh, great. great, looking forward. Yeah, looking forward to all the sessions. Totally agree as uh, you know, you saw the growth, um, yeah. it's only growing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really great. <coughs> so next up is LoRaWAN device management and uh, we're gonna launch something very cool and we made a, a video for that. Building hardware is hard. And therefore, building an Internet of Things end-to-end -end solution is hard. The history of computing shows that every time we put an abstraction layer on top of hardware, adoption of the hardware platform gets accelerated. Like the operating systems for the first computers, app stores for smartphones, and cloud management platforms for data centers. We can apply this concept to the Internet of Things, creating IoT devices that can be programmed with apps to serve specific use cases, yet leaving the hardware untouched. We present the Generic Node Sensor Edition, a LoRaWAN device packed with sensors and loads of features, capable of supporting several use cases with a single device and just one single supply chain. Available as an off-the-shelf product or as a boilerplate for LoRaWAN sensor development for device makers. Whether you want to build an application for cold chain, retail, smart building, smart city, agriculture, or smart offices, you can build that app with the generic node development tools. The app is provisioned remotely over LoRaWAN on deployment through simple messages or firmware updates over the air, and while the device is already in the field. This means that from production all the way to installation, it is the same device. This brings immense economies of scale advantages, which allows device makers to bring their product faster to the market with complete feature sets. At the core of this generic node sensor edition, you can find the ST Micro's STM32WL, the LoRa radio, and a MCU packed in one system on a chip. The onboard sensors and peripherals can measure temperature and humidity, while the accelerometer detects the smallest of the movements and vibrations with high accuracy. Along with that, there is also a buzzer which provides auditory feedback and an external flash for data logging and making it ready for firmware updates over the air. Security is embedded through a secure enclave, allowing it to join any LoRaWAN network in the world that supports the latest specifications set by the LoRa Alliance. Using the state-of-the-art BuckBoost technology, a wider input range, a higher efficiency, and a battery agnostic operation are guaranteed. It brings everything you expect from a solid LoRaWAN sensor node, long range and longevity on two standard AA batteries. 
This product enables you to start building IoT solutions without the complexity and risk of hardware engineering and lets you focus on the software that makes the product unique. Get it now! So, we created this product because we wanted to make sure that the cost of developing a LoRaWAN um, uh, 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 a device way, way cheaper. So reduce the non-recurring engineering cost, uh, reduce the feedback loops, uh, because there's already a lot of R&D uh, inside of this boilerplate, and also to give you a quick start with great IDEs that just makes you uh, build a Hello World application in, uh, in literally in an hour. So uh, let's get in the device. Um, So here it is. Isn't it, um, a, isn't it a beauty, Johan? Finally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, what you see here at the heart of the device is the STM32WL by uh, ST Microelectronics. And we have Benjamin here in the studio that uh, will tell all about it. Hi everyone and uh, hi Vinken and Johan. Thank you very much for having ST Microelectronics again this year. By the way, this is a very nice virtual stage and a very cool virtual show, so good job to you guys. Well, uh, last year I physically came to Amsterdam to introduce the first version of STM32WL series, which is a single core version based on ARM Cortex-M4. And this year I virtually come here to talk about the latest version of STM32WL, which is a dual core version based on ARM Cortex-M4 and ARM Cortex-M0+. Plus bringing advanced security features, which I will have the pleasure to detail during my keynote. I will also talk about the whole ecosystem offer coming with STM32WL, and all of you need to know that everything is currently available on the market. Then I will seize the opportunity to showcase concrete examples of devices uh, involving STM32WL, such as the magnificent generic node that was just announced by Vinke and Johan, of course. Uh, so to all of you uh, attending this virtual show, we really look forward to seeing you during ST's keynote. We will also have workshop hosted by ST's experts, and we hope to meet you on our virtual booth where a live video Q&A session will take place. By the way, you will have a chance there to uh, get a free STM32 WL nuclear board, so we are really waiting for you there. In the meantime, uh, enjoy the show and uh, see you very soon. Let's go. So check out uh, Benjamin's, uh, Benjamin's talk. So that's the MCU and the LoRa chip. Um, what you see here on the top uh, is a, a red component. It's a virtual antenna by Fructus Antennas, and they have a very interesting system. Uh, uh, and we have Jaap here to tell you all about it. It was great working with the TTN team early on during the system design, as we were able to simulate the antenna performance from the get-go. As you can see here, this red virtual antenna is a standard component that ensures an optimal antenna performance at a fraction of the cost compared to custom design. More importantly, we were able to detect design issues early on, which enabled your team to optimize even before the prototyping stage. Frankly, this is critical to many device makers, as they cannot afford to go through endless design revisions. During the last couple of years, I've seen too many poor performing products, and then the data from the edge simply does never end up in the cloud. You have to start thinking about antennas like tires on a Formula One car. You can never win the race with the wrong tires. I'm sure there's a lot more to be said, so if interested, come to our virtual booth and we will explain in detail. For now, back to Inge. So, so very interesting, both a product and uh, and a service. So let's uh, let's jump to the the sensors that are uh, on the on the device. So what you see here is that we uh, both have a temperature humidity uh, sensors by Sensorion. They're specifically made to be low power. The other sensor is an accelerometer, which uh, can detect rotation, fall, uh, impact, etc. Uh, and this is also specialized for low-power devices, uh, and it's by ST Micro. 
So here on the front of the device, you see uh, a buzzer. And we added that buzzer because we saw that in the field, sometimes when a device is out of battery, but also when, for instance, it's lost or it's, it's being placed at a, uh, at a, in a position where you can't remember, a buzzer or audio feedback is, is very, very interesting. What you also see here is a quick connector, so you can use this for prototyping and make sure that you connect all kinds of different sensors. And we have all, also these breakout rig, rigs, which allow you, uh, allows you to uh, even more extend the device. On the back side again, there is the flash memory, and that allows you to store your firmware versions. So you can ship the generic node with all sorts of firmwares, and you can activate the firmware to use when the device is deployed in the field. And the flash memory is also used to store uh, incoming firmware updates. We also put the secure element on the generic node, and that means that all generic nodes are securely provisioned on the thing's join server. And this is a secure enclave that also performs the LoRaWAN cryptographic operations. And that makes it a really, really secure LoRaWAN device that not only works on the thing's network, but on any LoRaWAN network. So going to the back again, um, we have put on here a bug boost uh, converter by Rico. And this is a state-of-the-art bug boost converter. And what it basically does, it squeezes every little bit of uh, energy out of any crappy battery. So uh, what it does is that through this component, it makes sure that the lifetime of this uh, device is even more extended. So it runs on... Uh, uh, two AA batteries, uh, and we chose that because there's a wide ecosystem of uh, AA batteries out there. You can get industrial ones, uh, you can, le can get lithium ones, and you can get even a very cheap one from IKEA. Um, whatever suits your uh, use case, you can select the battery yourself. Woo. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, we have the casing from uh, Bopla. Uh, they have three different casings with the same internals, so also it gives you a flexibility on what kind of casing you want. And interesting, you can also select a, a ring, which makes it watertight. So this gives you a lot of diversity. Either you need the uh, water, uh, you need it be it water resistant or not. So what do you think, Johan? Is yeah, it exciting or what? Super exciting. Yeah. It's not as big as this one, though. No, no, no. no. This it's, size. It's this, this size or something. So that's good. So um, we've been working on this product for very long, having a lot of iterations. This has been uh, quite a journey to get it to the level where we want. And we also launched an... Uh, uh, a stealth community and gathered a lot of feedback because uh, we see this as an enablement for device makers. Um, so we want to get close to them and just know like, what do they really want in this boilerplate? How can we kickstart their device development? Uh, and we have uh, Luca from Ernas who, uh, who is part of that stealth community and he's, uh, he's going to tell you about uh, what he wants to do with it. Hi, it's been a year since I've seen you all last at the Things conference. Awesome to have you back. My name is Luka Mustafa from Institute Ernest in Slovenia, where over the past year we've been sitting at home and creating automated solutions and improving IT products we've built so far, creating a range of partners and an ecosystem which allows us to build most advanced edge IT devices to create novel solutions and create additional value in 2021. A very exciting project we've been working on and we decided to share this year is the Elephant Edge with a range of partners which you will hear plenty from uh, on this conference, we've been building the most advanced elephant tracker, which is designed to outlive the animal, but at the same time, bring in a lot of extra value from the sensors, from the machine learning side, and from the low power GPS tracking. We've put together a lot of technologies for this, uh, where we combine the greatest and the latest that's out in the field, things we've only heard for the first time about uh, a year ago. This now allows us to build very good end-to-end -end industrial IoT solutions. Let that be from the electrical grid, allowing us to monitor critical infrastructure, to detect problems in various industrial settings from power plants uh, to production processes, 
But even more importantly, we take this out to the built infrastructure, say tunnels, for example, where we use this also for sensing applications, but most importantly, even to control and monitor robots doing critical tasks and making this infrastructure better. Overall, we've seen also a need for a single purpose device, a very optimized and well-built solution, which tackles a particular challenge. The things interested have been developing the generic node, which is a nice example of how to do this right. It's a well-built design, which allows modifications, but the core is there and stable and is well proven. So on that basis, we've created a robust version of this so we can take the great existing solution and put it in a robust industrial product when that is needed. In this conference, welcome uh, to my keynote later on in the day, but also feel free to explore all of our partners and our uh, interesting projects that will be presented there and learn about what we built and also suggest your ideas. Great, great, great to hear from, uh, from Luca, a long-term uh, partner from us. So, uh, so this is uh, about the generic node. We have one more thing, uh, is that um, we're also launching uh, uh, later this, uh, this year the LR1110 version of the generic node using the same uh, um, uh, approach here as well. Here do you see the, the first uh, design coming. Uh, so if you want to know more, go to thegenericnode.com, go to the Things Industry stand, um, uh, and uh, it will help you get uh, started. So from devices back through to the cloud, to the, to the network uh, management software, um, you've been talking a lot about uh, the Things stack. You've shown us fancy consoles, fancy UI. But the last time I looked, the thingsnetwork.org still has the old version. What's up with that? Yeah, that's a great question. The Things Network is just running a really good version, V2. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but we are now finally upgrading the Things Network to V3. So I showed this slide before, uh, the overview with the different um, uh, instances of the Things stack. And you already see the Things Network there in the top right. Uh, so that is um, uh, the Things Network connected to Packet Broker. Um, and we are now upgrading uh, the Things Network to the Things Stack. Uh, and then with Packet Broker, you can exchange traffic with other network instances. And we have a new way to log in uh, for, uh, for your uh, user account, and that's called the Things ID. And the Things ID is our single sign on system for all the things. So you're going to use that for logging into our websites, the community pages, the forum. Um, certification will also be managed with the Things ID, um, uh, but also the new uh, console. Uh, you can log in with the Things ID to uh, the Things network. Um, but it will also be uh, possible to use it as a login with the Things ID uh, for apps and third party websites. Uh, and so, if you in the community want to build a login system, you can do that. Um, so, uh, all, the, all the existing developers are going to be migrated securely. So, you probably already have a the Things ID account. Awesome. Then we're going to uh, shut down uh, V2, um, and we have a bunch of migration tools available. Uh, so you can migrate from V2, from the current version of the community network, uh, to the new version, to V3. Uh, we're going to make the Things Network read-only, uh, so you won't be able to add new applications and new gateways uh, to V2 uh, from April. And um, we are planning to shut V2 down uh, around September. And that's obviously also, uh, we are closely monitoring all the uh, measures around COVID-19. And if it's uh, not possible to go to gateways or go to devices uh, to rejoin them or reconfigure them, uh, then we obviously postpone uh, those deadlines. So we'll, uh, we'll, have a, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that as well. We'll keep this a friendly migration. We're not gonna, For gonna sure. set, we're gonna, not going to set up anybody. No, we're not going to let you take any health risks because of V3. Yeah, yeah. Um, all the gateways, they are uh, already connected to Packet Broker. Uh, so that's uh, something that we already put in place uh, last year. Uh, and they will stay connected. So uh, even if you have endpoints configured to V2, then you don't have to go to these gateways. They will stay connected. But if you want to go to the gateways and want to upgrade them, this is a great opportunity to update the firmware and to upgrade them to basic station. Uh, because that's a really good and safe protocol that we now support in V3. And then we have the Things Network V3. Um, 
and uh, we, the Things Industries, uh, are going to operate all the public clusters. And this is a strategical, strategical change uh, compared to with V2, uh, when we had uh, community, communities to operate uh, clusters. Uh, but we now believe that we want to harmonize that, we want to use a single DNS, a single configuration and a single version. Um, but with Packet Broker, it's going to be easier than ever to uh, set up your own cluster. So we welcome the community to operate their own clusters, uh, instances of the Things stack open source, log in with the Things ID connected to Packet Broker, uh, and you can manage uh, networks that way as well. But we are now going to operate um, uh, the uh, uh, public community clusters uh, in different areas, uh, and we're going to use it, we're going to operate it uh, pretty much the same way as our commercial, the Things Stack cloud offering, uh, except that the community network is one big pool of applications and organizations and users, just like you're used to. Um, and we start with uh, uh, deployments in Europe, the Americas, and Australia. And we're going to put a poll online on the uh, Things Network forums uh, to ask uh, what your opinion is where we should deploy the other uh, public clusters globally. The European cluster is already installed. Uh, you can see here the address. You can log in with the Things ID, and you can already start adding devices to the Things network on V3. Wow. So that's now awesome. finally, finally. So we're getting there. We're getting uh, there. All the new software is coming to uh, the yep. Things network as well. Uh, harmonization uh, across this, uh, uh, the, all the platforms. That is, that is, that's great news. So uh, next up is an exciting. A project we've been working on for uh, already almost uh, one and a half years is that we saw a huge opportunity for IoT uh, 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 on the seas, on, on ships. Uh, and we're working with companies like Norsi on asset tracking uh, and uh, condition monitoring uh, uh, through our partnership with uh, Williamson Shipping. And... Um, uh, together, uh, we built many use cases and provided Williamson Shipping with a platform to, to, to run their IoT applications um, and to, 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 to showcase that, um, we created a, a, a little video. At any given moment, 78,000 merchant vessels are operational around the world shipping cargo. Even the smallest efficiency gains in routes, maintenance planning, and goods management can have a massive impact. Reducing CO2, operational costs, and delivery times. Data is critical in finding these inefficiencies. Whether it's data about the condition of onboard equipment, crew safety, in-transit vehicles, or locations of onshore assets. To gather relevant data, we need to fit sensors to assets, which send their readings to centralized or distributed control systems to make informed decisions. These can be thousands of sensors per ship or per port. In most cases, wiring these sensors is not an option because they're moving or because it's simply too expensive. In these cases, wireless is the way to go. Until now, wireless data collection in maritime supply chains has been a challenge as these harsh environments are not friendly to many radio frequency technologies. We solve this by using the latest radio frequency technologies. Wilhelmsen brings all of this together with its IoT for the Seas platform, the new maritime standard for sensors, connectivity, and data handling that can meet the demands of its industry. The standards of this platform are open and the technology is proven. So suppliers can easily develop sensors and solutions that are relevant to the maritime industry and its customers. Join the IoT for the Seas now. Nice. Yeah, this is, uh, this is super cool and there are so many opportunities here and uh, yeah, the, uh, the entire ecosystem is invited to join, uh, join this and, and, and to explore all the problems that can be solved uh, in the maritime industry using uh, uh, LoRaWAN. Um, uh, we have with us now uh, 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 John uh, uh, Ulstein, 
uh, and uh, from uh, Williamson Shipping, and he's, uh, he's going to tell us more about uh, the IoT for the seas. Thanks, Vinke and Johan, for having me here. As you may know, Williamson is one of the largest providers of maritime services in the world. In the last year, we have increased our digital activities, including drones, 3D printing, autonomous ships, among others. We have worked closely with Semtech and the Things Industry to embed LoRaWAN into our business and have successfully tested and deployed pilots on board ships, in ports and on mainland. The wireless LoRaWAN replaces expensive wiring, allowing us to extend our service and application using low-cost, battery-operated devices. LoRaWAN is performing exceptionally well in exposing data from hard-to-get places. The recent addition of 2.4 makes it suitable to deploy in our global operation. In the past year, we have experience with asset tracking, condition monitoring, and numbers of other use cases. The result has been so overwhelming that we have decided to launch our new service platform, IoT of the Seas. Together with device makers and application developers, such as the audience here today, we offer our customer access to the digital, global LoRaWAN ecosystem. Make sure to check into the talk marked Maritime to see how we do it. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Check out uh, the, uh, the track on Maritime uh, and already see what kind of cool applications that, uh, that are there. So this is also an invitation, right, to the community, the developer community watching now to build solutions and applications. For sure, for sure. And there are so many um, opportunities in this industry that's just literally unbelievable. Yeah. So, next up, uh, announcement where we are super excited about. It brings together the power of LoRaWAN and the power of cellular LTM. Uh, and uh, what it is, it is a packaged proposition of a LoRaWAN gateway with an LTM backhaul together with the global LTM sim of Deutsche Telekom. So uh, we're super, super excited about this. It brings a huge amount of benefits. Um, this is how the general architecture look li looks like. Uh, Johan, can you maybe tell a bit around what, uh, what we see here? Yeah, so on the left you see the devices, and they are just communicating with LoRa uh, to a gateway. But this gateway has an LTEM backhaul. So it has a SIM card, and it, since this is a global network, um, this is going to work everywhere. So this gateway you see here, for example, this is a MicroTik gateway. Uh, it has an LTEM radio. It's provisioned with a SIM card. And uh, via this uh, cellular network, the gateway can communicate with the Things stack uh, operated by the Things Industries. Yeah. And there's a additional uh, advantages. So uh, first of all, the, the, the deep indoor penetration of LTEM, make sure that you can put this uh, gateway anywhere in, for instance, a building. Uh, but also the APN, uh, which is basically a, a, a VPN, can be configured directly to the IP address of the LoRaWAN network server, making sure that it's a completely secured connection and literally nothing else can be done with this device. Right. And that makes it really easy to deploy LoRaWAN networks because you don't have to have access to a local Ethernet uh, where you deploy the gateways or you don't have to bother with different cellular contracts in different countries. So that is now all a solved problem. You just need the device and a power source. Yeah, yeah super, super excited. And uh, we have here Afsal from Deutsche Telekom to tell a bit more about this partnership. Hey IoT friends, it's Afsal from Deutsche Telekom IoT and today I have very exciting news for you. In fact, it has been a very, very long time that I have been so excited about something that is happening in the IoT industry. So what is happening exactly? I will tell you everything about it. Let's start with some statements that we, people in the IoT industry, make very, very often. One of these statements is, you cannot do it alone. You need collaborations with other companies, 
other suppliers, other providers. It's true, we say it very often. And the other one is, there is no technology to rule them all. It's true as well. There is no technology that fits all IoT use cases out there. Each use case requires different types of connectivity, other protocols, other platforms, and sometimes even other hardware. So today, the things industries and DT IoT are kicking off a collaboration to solve some challenges in the IoT industry. Which challenges exactly? This is where it gets exciting. If I look closely at the LoRa ecosystem, it's huge, it's mature. Many IoT devices out there today are running on LoRa networks. I love it. But some of these use cases are facing certain challenges when they are about to scale. Imagine that you need to install a lot of gateways for one customer in one building or multiple buildings. You don't want to have the hassle with pulling cables or look at Wi-Fi connected gateways. It happens very often that the end customer requires other security protocols than Wi-Fi is offering. Or imagine that you need to install gateways in ships, trucks, containers, or even basements. You need deep indoor coverage. So this is exactly what we are going to solve. TTI and DTIT are going to offer LTEM connected LoRa gateways. This will simplify your installation with no touch provisioning and it brings security features like APN and SIM encryption. If you want to be one of the first ones getting access to this new product, make sure that you will join our digital marketplace at the Things conference or join our keynote on Wednesday the 27th. I hope to see you there and thanks for watching the video. See you soon. Nice. Very nice message from, uh, from after all, from Deutsche Telekom. Uh, uh, and, and we are just as excited as after all about yeah. this industry uh, collaboration. Um, and this um, uh, gateway here, what you see, is manufactured by Mikrotik. Uh, and, um, uh, and we have Dennis here uh, from Mikrotik to tell you more about the product. Hi, my name is Denis Truhanovs. I'm Head of Innovation in Microtik. Today I'm going to tell you about new exciting Microtik products for LoRa, which uses narrowband and CATAM technologies for IoT cellular connection, low cost and low bandwidth. These technologies are supported by many mobile operators all over the world. Combining LoRa and CATAM makes not the best solution for LoRa networks that relies on CATAM connectivity or uses CATAM as a backup link for a wired Ethernet connection. The NAT features 800 or 900 MHz LoRa interface, 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and two Ethernet ports. Besides being LoRa gateway, NAT can monitor onboard GPIOs, forward Bluetooth packets over HTTP or MQTT, and translate Modbus interface to TCP. It can be used for outdoor environments as well. NAT comes with DIN rail mount, which allows easy integration inside outdoor cabinets. This brings low-cost connectivity at very remote areas. Thus can be used for many IoT applications, agriculture, asset tracking, cold chain monitoring, and many more. It's very flexible and has very disruptive price of $209 list price. But that's not all. I have even more exciting news for you. Microtik is following new developments in lower technology, so we are bringing new features to our existing LoRa gateways. Well-known WAPLR kit that was available with 800 and 900 MHz LoRa interfaces now will be also available with 2.4 GHz LoRa interface. That brings new possibilities of using 2.4 GHz LoRa interface with higher data rates and higher device density. It will be available for even lower pricing than 800 MHz gateways. Thus, it's a great fit for a wide range of LoRa applications. So if you are interested in NAT and other LoRa products, visit our webpage, microtech.com. Nice. 
Super interesting product, and yeah, you see the versatility sure. they, uh, they, they bring. Um, uh, again, go to either the Things Industries, Microtech, or uh, a Dutch Telecom's uh, booth to learn more about this product and the specifics uh, that, uh, that you want to learn from this. So, we're nearing the end. Um, there's one final uh, uh, hurdle, there's one final challenge. Um, we've put it all together. To put it all together. And that's what we're all about. I think every conference, what we try to do is what is the biggest problem that the IoT industry is facing to scale and how we're going to solve this. And, um, and, and, and this, is, this is a picture we've shown at the 2018 conference. Yep. And we, we, we try to show and picture how, um, how an installation looks like and um, like what visualizes the cost. And there's way too many people here, of course. Uh, and this is way too costly of a process. And what we've seen with our customers that once they exceed a certain skill, uh, installation, configuration, etc., becomes very, very expensive. You addressed the device repository, which already addresses the, the, the configuration and the provisioning. Uh, but we're going to come with a disruptively new service where we will uh, have a wholesale global installation service um, uh, starting from uh, uh, 500 sites. And um, uh, what, we what we did is we built a proposition together with a partner that allows any customer any systems integrator to tap into a global workforce of gateway and sensor installation uh, engineers and field services. It, the network covers more than 25 countries. Um, it, it comes as a device, as a service. Um, there's an SLA on the last mile. So uh, uh, as a things industries, we provide the SLA on uh, the last mile of connectivity. It includes maintenance and swaps. So we're trying to have these devices in the field for very long. Um, but yeah, in the end, you need to take them back uh, because of e-waste uh, regulations. Uh, or you might need to change some batteries uh, or, or maybe uh, uh, a few of them break. Um, it includes uh, logistics and warehousing. So it also includes uh, 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 stocking uh, these uh, uh, these devices, because also what we've seen is that if you're going to do a large installation, let's say you're going to install 10,000 devices, that's ne go never going to go overnight. That's always stretched over a period of time, uh, and then you want to have that service as well. It comes with a OPEX model, uh, so you don't have to procure the hardware. Uh, it has end-of-life services, so um, um, you need to take your responsibility. You cannot leave uh, devices out in the fields uh, 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 for sure. Uh, and they come with a five-year contract, uh, and they start for 2,500 euros uh, 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 as a contract value, uh, and it comes with one gateway and six devices to start with. It's a wholesale service, so it's uh, available for selected customers, but we believe that this part of the puzzle will solve a massive scalability issue in the market. Right. I think this is, uh, this is the glue to put it all together yeah. for large-scale deployments. Yeah. So we have the generic node, we have the stack, we have our partners, integrators, and this is getting it installed at yeah. scale. Putting it in the field and, and yeah. putting it and to And maintaining work it. And adding that to all the messages that Changing we've seen. Changing the batteries. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, and pushing that exponential growth that we now see, uh, see uh, uh, in the industry. Um, if you have more uh, questions around this proposition, go to the Things Industries booth. You will find um, our people there. And um, that's it. Um, still different than yeah. last year. Uh, we miss everybody of you. Uh, we hope to have you all here uh, 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 next year uh, in a physical form back in Amsterdam in January. Um, it's just Monday. Uh, we ha you have a full week ahead, you can plan it in advance, uh, you can watch uh, f uh, talks back, you have the certification, you have the networking uh, tool, so, um, so yeah. Yeah, we hope to see you at the booth, uh, yeah. connect with each other, stay safe, hang tight, enjoy the conference and hope to see you next year.
Thanks.